ladies and gentlemen, we're here. A part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea, yeah. Beat up John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! I pull a little bit of the bubbly. Two! Sweet! following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Huey here, and joining me once again is my good brother from the Fight Game Podcast, it's John LaRocca. How's it going, man? It is going good. Better than yesterday after watching that AEW <laughs> Revolution pay-per-view. <laughs> I was going to say. So. That, that felt like six hours. <laughs> forever. <laughs> so uh, before uh, you and I connected tonight, I just uploaded our review uh, that Philip and I did last night for AEW Revolution. And then even still, um, <laughs> a couple things. So um, I, I was kind of half watching the pay-per-view live when it took place because I was editing another podcast. By the way, I like, uh, uh, I've recorded like, I think six episodes in the last week and a half. Like I've been just cranking out episodes. This would be like number seven in like a week and a half. So, uh, there's been so much to talk about and I've just been putting them out, putting them out, putting them out. Um, and so, uh, you know, I was kind of half watching. I was taking stuff in and kind of seeing stuff on Twitter. I wasn't doing a lot of live tw- tweeting at the time. Um, and then uh, 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 I saw the finish and everything. So I don't know what I was more disappointed after this weekend, the finale for WandaVision or AEW Revolution. So um, I had like my initial thoughts. Were you disappointed in the WandaVision finale? I mean, I guess I, I I got suckered into all the hype and all the fan theories and speculations of what was going to happen. So in my head, I fell for it. Even at my, uh, you know, I like to think my mature age of like, I've seen enough of these movies for the last, what, 13 years of the MCU. Uh, but I fell for the hype once again. And uh, uh, so, yeah, these high expectations and th- all these big reveals were going to happen. And now. It didn't. It was still a solid last episode for uh, for WandaVision, but uh, yeah, I guess I uh, uh, like I said overhyped myself and uh, my expectations were really high. But no, at the end, it was a lot of fun. It was better than the popcorn fart that happened for <laughs> Omega and Moxie. So, match. so so anyway, I, what happened was uh, on Monday I rewatched the pay per view all the way through and just was focused on that because I just I was like. All right, I really want to, you know, take it all in. And that way, when I do my review, I really have like a fresh perspective of everything. Um, and so even rewatching it, there was like some little things I started noticing. And you know, I did my review with Philip and I was like, you know, I'm glad I had like 24 hours to sleep on it and think about it. And then I was reading all your tweets and there was a lot of similar thoughts I that you had that I had. And I was like, okay, we, we got to do some like final thoughts on revolution. I know it's like, I feel like everyone's been talking to, to death for the last few days, but, um, yeah. A lot of stuff to talk about. So, yeah, I mean, let's jump into, like, the obvious, the the finale of the pay-per-view of the barbed wire death match, exploding death match between Mox and Kenny Omega. Uh, obviously, it was like a big dud. The the fireworks that was supposed to go off didn't really make a big bang. And, and I think a lot of people had huge expectations of thinking they're going to see something from Japan in the 80s or 90s with big explosions, smoke in the air. So... Yeah, I mean, and you had some good uh, uh, comments as well about that whole finale, how it played out from the time of the pinfall uh, to Eddie Kingston's run. And so, yeah, just if you want to kind of sum up your takeaways from it. Well, yeah, first of all, I, I mentioned this on my podcast, the Fight Game Podcast, mm-hmm. with Kirk Gonzalez, that 
you know, it's a big risk doing these kind of matches because if the if the special effects don't come off, that's what people are going to remember. And yep. I didn't think it would not come off, you know, because they're booking this match. I think they would have it all well planned out, but I don't know what happened. I would think they test this before the show started and they would see like, hey, this is not enough. We got to – or I don't know. I don't know what happened. I haven't figured that part out yet, but – and it happened, man. I, it's it's just, what a bummer for them. And but like the worst part of it is that Tony Khan is trying to spin it on Kenny Omega as storyline. He's not yeah. good at making creating these gimmick matches. He was the one responsible for setting this match up and you know creating it and building it. And it was his fault. I thought that was kind of. I mean, car, there's Carney and wrestling all the time, but. You know, a lot of people with AEW, it's all inclusive, and everyone loves everyone's Tony Khan's the best. He's so honest. And he's a pretty honest guy, and he treats people really well. But that was a little bit carny and shocking. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure he got a lot of flack for that. You know, because that's he should say, you know what? I'm sorry, folks. It was a dud. Apologize. We'll make it up next time. We'll never do that match again. You know, just you know, tongue in cheek it at this point. And just move on yeah it was interesting so yeah in the media scrum uh that tony Khan did, yeah he tried to totally cave fabe it up and say yeah it was all part of the plan that's how it's how it's supposed to go and then uh but i guess um word came out recently in the last like day or so the, yeah kenny omega reports are his furious backstage obviously come on when things don't yeah. go right and that's like what you just said. That as great of a show, or if it was, you know, for fans who enjoyed it, unfortunately, that's going to be the last thing that they remember, and that's what that show is going to be always remembered for now. Uh, yeah. What was it, like WCW Chamber of Horrors pay per view? Was that the one <laughs> back yeah, in the I day? Yeah, uh, they they uh, let's get Abdul the Butcher. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking that Abdul... can right now on the yeah. I... <laughs> Not one of my fine moments as a kid watching it. Much. One of those one of those matches where I'm. Thank God my dad was not in the room at the time, you know, in the family room, when I'm watching that. So, uh, so, but yeah, the match itself. I thought the match itself overall was a pretty good. I really thought, man, in hindsight, they really just if they want to do something a big gimmick match. It's really going to get buys, and sure, this sure did. I heard that did really good buy rate because you're promoting an exploding ring, right? So, of course, people are interested and <laughs> yeah. they're going to buy. But I think they could have still got that 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 curiosity on a no-rope barbed wire match. It just seemed like mm. it would have been violent. It would have advertised the violence and people would have tuned in for that. I think they would have worked a better match around it instead of working around these, these special effects. And then one of my pet peeves, and I hate this, anytime there's a blood feud Rush, people hate each other and they start to match off with the lockup i just lose my shit because why would you especially in a barbed wire match like you're not gonna lock up you're gonna start throwing blows someone's gonna double leg a guy or you know something's gonna happen not just let's lock up and call an elbow and move around like no dude like i don't want to see that I yeah see fight because this is a fight right so i didn't like that part but other than that it settled down to a, a pretty good match but then here comes the, you know, the good brothers come out and they're double teaming Moxley forever. Mm-hmm. Mega pins Moxley, and then the, the all of a sudden the the timer goes off. Let's get the countdowns going off. Yet they didn't have the countdown the whole match, which is weird. Yeah, all of a sudden, the countdown just appears. <laughs> And everyone's like, oh, we got to get out. It's going to explode. But even the sound effect, remember it was like 10 minutes left, and Shivani's like, oh, that sound means like 10 minutes left before everything explodes. But it was like, it was some weird siren sound. It wasn't even like that clear. (laughs) I don't even remember that. Right? But it was like, I was watching the Spanish feed because (laughs) our live is a piece of crap stream service that can't get a replay up. Immediately after a show airs. And so they say it's going to be, oh, we'll be up, you know, within 24 hours. Yeah. Well, you, you would think it'd be up in the morning, right? <laughs> and I figured it was. So I go to watch it last night. Wait, the kids go to bed because I don't want to watch a barbed wire bloody match, even with a popcorn fart full of special effects. And, <laughs> and I go to click. This will be up shortly. I'm like, what? Like, like, like you know, it's not loaded yet. But then I click on the Spanish version, and it's loaded. So I watched the Spanish version, and, 
You know, I thought Joey Ryan, I thought Joey, Ryan, I thought sure, Joey Styles was doing commentary because I hear oh, no Smiles. Like, <laughs> I thought maybe they got him to do the show. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I I get what you're saying. All that stuff, as far as um, the the finish itself, like okay, Kenny hit the one wing angel on the chair after yeah. the Good Brothers helped and interfered, and he gets the win. And I thought, okay, that's done. Like, see, I don't have a lot of experience with those Japanese death matches. I don't know. I've seen the highlights online, but I haven't watched a lot of that. So when the pin happened, I'm like, okay, it's done. Then good. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, yeah, they still got to get out of the ring. It's going to explode still at the 30-minute mark. And I'm like, but the match is over. Can someone just stop it and turn it off? Like, is it one of those situations where as soon as they hit the button, there's no turning back, even 30 yeah. minutes? Like, that's what I was kind of confused about. I was like, wait, what? Like, Kenny won. It's like, why do you need to explode still? Like, <laughs> And then people are, you know, Eddie Kingston turning babyface and joining Moxley was a storyline that was – when it was going to happen, it was going to be a big deal, right? Yeah. Because they really built that. I mean, especially, especially with those Kingston promos, you know. Mm-hmm. You really, when that turn was going to happen, it was going to be big. Mm-hmm. So they do it here. <laughs> but he, Kingston, runs out as the timer is going down. He runs through Omega and the Good Brothers. Blade and Butcher trying to stop him. He's like, F you guys. I'm going in there and save my friend. Well, here's the thing. Were you feeling those feelings when he's getting triple teamed, hit with barbed wire, sliced up, one winged angel through a tape to a chair? But this ring is going to explode, and now you're coming out to help him. It's <laughs> that just didn't make sense to me. Like he would just come out now after he just got murdered, you know, by three guys. Yeah, it would have made sense to come out a little bit earlier. Maybe try to make the save, and then the the, the numbers game outplayed them, and he gets beat up. But then. Maybe, yeah, at the last second, jumps on him, jumps on the grenade and saves him. Yeah, I'm with you, too. Just the timing. But it just it felt like the timing was off because I thought the match was over. But then they felt like they were killing time forever. Like, yeah. between the three of them beating up John Mox, I'm like, what is going on? And, and then they finally say, oh, yeah, the, the 30-minute window. I'm like, what? Like, that's still going to happen? Even the match is over? Because um, I, I kept it. Bob Wire, they want to do special effects, just do it. Electrified barbed wire. Well, and, and, I'm exploded ring part of it. And, and like I said, I don't know much about these type of matches. It's like, okay, sure. What happens if the bomb goes off at the 30 minute mark, but the match is not over? Then, okay, let's say it explodes and everyone survives, hypothetically, like the smoke clears. Do they keep wrestling still until there's a winner or is it just a draw? Like that, that's why I was just so confused about that 30 minute. Uh, expiration with the explosions. Like, what's the point of that last explosion? I'm trying to remember the last one I watched was Onita and Hayabusa. I remember correctly, which is funny because it was Anita's. It was Anita's retirement match, <laughs> and Hayabusa was going to be the guy that's going to lead FMW. So of course Anita beats him. You know, because that's what yeah. you want. The guy that's going to replace you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so Anita like pins him, and I think the then the. The time limit starts going down, and he's like, Onita's like, no. So he jumps on a Hayabusa and, like, protects him from the explosion. It's I, I saw when I, was, when I was younger, I'm like, yeah, this is great. But now I'm looking back, I think it was stupid as hell. Well, it's just the logic doesn't make sense. And that's why I'm just so confused. Because I saw the one clip online or, like, a, a Twitter or whatever. Uh, I think it's Onita and, like, he, Sasuke. Um, he was wearing a white shirt. He grabs the ref and like he grabs two guys and he like covers both of them and then there's the big explosion. I, it looks a little bit older footage, so I don't know what what year it was, but probably ninety five. I'm guessing. I yeah, think. so it's like okay, he just had a match with this guy, but yet he still uh, protects him and the ref and gets on both of them, and then you see the big explosion. So I'm like, I'm guessing that was him and Hayabusa. So I'm guessing. So I'm like, okay, so once the big explosion happens. What was the point of the big explosion at the end? If you live, do you like you're the winner or do you keep the match going? Like, so that's what I like. I know from a spectacle looking, I was like, oh, that's that. Yeah, sure. Like, the highlight looks awesome. Big old explosion, smoke in the air. But ultimately, was that service for the match? <laughs> like, yeah. so anyway. I know it's, a, it's a ridiculous stipulation. Like I said, I think they should have kept it simple. With the bar, bar no rope bar, bar matches, <laughs> yeah. that is. But you know what I mean. It would have fit. It would really fit their story better 
But I get it. They're you know trying. I mean, it only what three weeks ago they announced this stipulation. So yeah, yeah. So listen, I mean, you know, uh, I'm, hopefully one day, maybe with some shoot interviews, people will explain what happened from their perspective. I mean, this is something that's going to be talked about for years to come, and uh, you know, it's unfortunate, especially for AEW in their early still. Uh, years of existence and hopefully they'll make it up on dynamite in weeks to come i love how they're going to spin this on dynamite um obviously K- tony kayfabe is trying to say oh yeah it's kenny's fault so will they acknowledge that on tv and say yeah kenny you suck building this thing it's all your fault um uh, i don't know we'll, we'll see how they how they try to recover from all this but uh um also, one other thing from the show I just wanted to touch on was uh, something I saw you talk about real quick was the Young Bucks and the Chris Jericho and JF match. And you brought up a good point about the storytelling in this match. And I was with you. I was watching it and I was like, OK, cool. The Young Bucks are doing all their spots. Hey, you, you know, you're going to get your money's worth, I guess, from quote, a Young Bucks style of match. But I was kind of losing a little bit of interest from what is going on here? Okay, you saw the inner circle beat up Papa Buck last week on Dynamite, but the Young Bucks are still kind of doing all their traditional moves, I guess, just to please the crowd there. So, But is this really servicing the story of trying to get revenge on behalf of their dad? So uh, I know you were tweeting about So if you kind of want to elaborate more what you were thinking about this whole thing. Well, that's, that's wrong. You know, they do this really heavy angle where they attack the Young Bucks' dad, bloody him up, throw him against the back of the semi truck and blood on their kids pictures and a really heavy angle and they go out there and it just becomes a typical young bucks match they mm-hmm. do all their moves um and they were doing a typical young bucks match with two guys chris jericho and jf are not the best dance partners for that type of match mm-hmm. pop flight uh, Pride and Powerful, yeah, those guys could do that style with them all day long. Mm-hmm. So I was really disappointed because I, I thought, okay, Jericho is going to slow it down. There's going to be a lot of storytelling in this. I mean, I don't think there was even a long heat on the Young Bucks. I think the Young Bucks are just mostly control this match the whole time. Yeah, they they had they were dominating. Yeah. Booked really strong, too. You brought up a good point where Jericho hit, I think, Matt Jackson with oh. the bat, and then MJF did his um, you know move off the ropes there. And he kicked out. I was like, damn, he's booked stronger than Hogan right there. You know what? I tweeted that out, and then I thought about, oh, yeah, I forgot. Orange Cassidy kicked out the, the baseball bat shot. So oh, then, okay. <laughs> so yeah. Just, so yeah. Felt, that bat doesn't mean anything. Anyway. <laughs> he's not, he, he does the same uh, intensity as Sting with the bat. I come to yeah, realize. yeah. That's Sting's gimmick now, so I don't think uh, Jericho should have the bat anymore. If it's, if I was looking there. <laughs> they should fight um, for the bat. <laughs> yeah, they can, they can do uh, – <laughs> I'm bat on the pole. Match and like once you start doing the the bat fighting between them, like you just cut with like stunt doubles, like some awesome like Darth Maul freaking Obi Wan Kenobi lightsaber battle, which kind of like that's what I want to see. Yeah. So apparently, I think Sting had a stunt double and did that Canadian Destroyer thing, or the hell it was, the Code Red, I believe. Okay, because there was one part in the cinematic match where uh, he had Ricky Starks. Or no, Ricky Starks had him up, mm-hmm. and then he was he was hitting him, and he was trying to come back down, and then they did a really weird time jump and a different camera angle, and all of a sudden Sting was like on his like on the ground. It was like a weird edit. I don't know if that's the spot you're talking about, or well, I think it was like the uh, not 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 Canadian story. I'm sorry, the Code Red move that Sting did in the ring. I think that was a stunt double. Really? I think so. I think so. It just seemed the cut was weird, but. I could be overthinking that. But anyways, yeah, so back to the Young Bucks, Jericho, and MGF match. Like, Jericho and MGF should have led this match. It should have been more their style, but the Young Bucks have to do their style. But I want to see MGF and Jericho really put a lot of heat on the Young Bucks, a slower pace, like start getting one of the Young Bucks and start beating their beating their brains out. And just like you know, just like we did your dad and just yell at Matt. Me and Matt, maybe they beat up Nick and they can yell at Matt. Like, you know, bring that out, you know, like interesting. Show, yeah. You know, show that, you know, like, and, but unfortunately with the young bucks, one, they're just not good actors, right? They're just not <laughs> Two, They think, well, we did. Cause we double legged him in the beginning. We started throwing these really bad punches and, you know, like, no, it's just putting a mean face and throwing punches. Doesn't mean like, Oh, you're really like, 
it's all how you present yourself. It's all how they tell the story of it and the breakdown of the match. But they, like I said, it was just one big Young Bucks match and, like, no heat at all in the Young Bucks. It was very strange. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, very disappointed in that match. And I had high hopes. I'm not, I'm not, not the biggest Young Bucks style guy, mm-hmm. but when they work with guys that don't do their style, they seem to have a better match. I think one of their best matches they had that I liked was they had a match with Butch and Blade. They had to slow it, they had to slow it down a little bit. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really just good quality tag match. And so I was kind of hoping... That would happen here, but a little more intense because of such a heavy angle they did on Dynamite. That's right. Yeah, no, that was a really good match uh, a while ago. So, uh, no, I, I get what you're saying, man. It, it, it's even, yeah, I, I'm with you. It's like, okay, when you go after someone's family, like, let that carry over into the match. Yeah, I'm with you. Jericho easily could have been pounding one of the young bucks and yelling at his other brother, look, I'm beating him up just like I beat up your dad. And just little details like that, just to add some more emotional value to the whole thing. I get that. So they ever, I don't think young bucks were ever on a disadvantage for longer than a fuse. Correct. No, I was watching. I was like, this is pretty one sided. So yeah. I was really amazed by it. But, uh, um, also I, I do agree with you. I thought Matt Hardy and Adam Page's match was probably the best one just cause like, I was like, it was structured really well. The pacing as you, uh, you tweeted out as well. I was like, this is really good. And granted, you're with Matt Hardy. He's been in the business for over what, 25 years. So. He's going to deliver uh, just a true pro wrestling match. And Hangman's one of the upcoming stars for AEW. It was really good. And even, uh, you know, Matt Hardy uh, uh, replied to your tweet as well. So that was a pretty awesome moment for you. But, yeah, is there anything else for that match you just wanted to touch on? Well, after what I saw previously, like, they finally had a match where they told a simple story. Matt Hardy is trying to take out uh, Adam Page's arm because the buck shot lariat and all that kind of stuff it was it was, clear, it was easy clearly focused match i just the only negative part of like I, that match is like god every time i see adam page in the damn dark order just frustrates me but that's because this guy should be doing this guy should be maybe ready for omega at this point instead of messing around the mid card so who knows what's next for omega well i guess we have some impact stuff's going on for him in the next yeah so uh no i'll touch on that one second so no you brought a good point because like hangman okay i think a lot of fans were marking out when he hugged the dark order at the end so like oh they're all friends again so it's like is he gonna be the new leader of the dark order or what's this gonna lead to more of a comedic thing for him and you're right like i envision he's gonna be the one to dethrone kenny omega they have the history there it could be like a year later after he lost to him and they broke up that he gets revenge and becomes the AEW world champion. But I was thinking like that could set that up for maybe all out. That could be one of their big, maybe fan attended shows again. That could be a big moment from the live crowd, but that's what theoretically six months away. And it's like, okay, that's six months. But I'm like, is that going to be enough time to really tell a compelling story and really convert him into this character? That's believable to dethrone Kenny. That's a big question that I'm kind of worried about for for hangman long term and and that's something like i i i you just brought up a good point with the storytelling it's like aew like i said i i love their existence i love what they've been doing for the business all that stuff and i realized i watch these matches and they're sure there's a lot of great spots and you know if you take all these highlights and chop it up it's a great highlight package but at the end of the day it becomes sometimes a little bit like white noise and it becomes very forgettable sometimes. I don't know about you. It's like, okay, I see all these same spots over and over. And I'm like, okay, did I really emotionally care that long term? And be like, dude, I still cannot get over like a year ago. They had this incredible match. I hope they do it again like that. So it's just the return fact, our long term, you know, uh, uh, relevancy, I guess I'm trying to get at. I know mean, I'm just trying to think how I can sum it up. It's just like long term. Yeah. And you forget about them the next day. Yeah. And that's what's frustrating. Like, you know, I, I know I keep harping back to the attitude era, but yeah, there's still so many moments from the attitude era that just had such an amazing impression on me that I still refer to and compare other stuff to that, mm-hmm. that time period. So that's my problem with AEW is like, are they doing enough moments that long term people are going to constantly refer back to and think that's where wrestling should be copying? So, 
it's such a big opening discussion. But yeah, you touched on uh, Kenny Omega. So it was announced on Impact tonight that uh, so this weekend they're having a pay-per-view and it's going to be uh, Moose taking on Rich Swan. They're Rich Swan's the Impact champion. Moose is the TNA champion. And I guess it's going to be a unification match. And then the winner will take on Kenny Omega at Rebellion in April, title versus title. So I guess early predictions, probably Kenny's going to win and become Impact champion as well. I'm guessing, right? The belt collector gimmick. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what's going to happen. And will it, it, it probably bump imp, Impact another 50000 you know, for maybe 100000 for one week, and then they might go back down unless he's – on the show every time. I don't think he's really been that big of a draw for them other than that one bump after that, the title change with uh, Moxley. So, yeah, I mean, what's next for Omega past that? I'm guessing uh, Christian Cage might be the guy they go to. That would be interesting. So, yeah, at, uh, you know, AEW announced a couple days ago was, yeah, they signed Christian Cage and also Ethan Page. Mm-hmm. So they got a lot of uh, <laughs> similar Ryan names. Cage and Dallas at Hangman Adam Page, Adam Diamond Dallas, Dow- Diamond Dallas Page was in attendance. Referee, he can referee the match. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, um, yeah, no Christian Cage. That's gonna be interesting. I haven't had a chance. He was on a uh, Renee Young's podcast that got released today, and he kind of explained, you know, how to get back into the ring. And long story short, uh, last year when he was doing that stuff with Randy Orton, I guess WWE were telling him like no contact, no contact. And he's like really no contact and i guess he went to go get some tests done in florida and also in pittsburgh and he passed all the concussion tests so he's like you know i think i can wrestle again and i think that's what led to his royal rumble appearance um they i from what i've i haven't listened to it but from what i heard they they didn't really talk about why he left ww or he did the royal rumble match but didn't sign with them Mm -hmm. uh tony khan said Christian reached out to him and said, Hey, I would love to come wrestle for you guys. And then they made a deal within like a week. And I guess even when Paul White teased the Hall of Fame caliber performer, uh, Christian technically did not sign yet. So that deal could have fallen through and Big Show would have looked like an idiot for teasing something. So um, hopefully we'll get more info. Maybe Christian will do talk as Jericho and kind of really spill the beans on everything. But yeah, what were your thoughts on Christian Cage and Ethan Page joining AEW now? Um, on, on Christian, I think it's a good signing. Um, you get a really good re- worker, smart worker. Um, I think he's going to add a lot to the show when it comes to the wrestling quality of the show. Um, I think it'll benefit a lot of the young guys working with him. Um, do I see him in the? I, I like always like Christian. Like I said, I think he's a good wrestler, but he's never a guy I thought. Man, I can't wait to he headlines that pay per view. Mm, it makes okay. Really good quality middle of the card guy. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that at all. There's that it's I'm not I'm not trying to knock him. I'm just saying like I don't think he's really gonna be a game changer for them. I mm. think I think he'll be you can probably push him to like a championship title shot main event one time. And then after that, like unless he's winning it, he's probably not. Like I think he just and goes back in that middle road like he was with WWE, mm-hmm. you know, that's just, you know, that's just his, his role. And, uh, but again, do I think it's a bad sign? No, I think he adds quality in ring outside the ring. I think if he's a good guy to go to, if you to help young guys out, if they have any questions, they want to go to him. Hopefully, hopefully they do. Cause he has a wealth of experience. He, you have a mm-hmm. guy that get that in your locker room. You definitely want to bounce stuff uh, off him to see what's, what would be good for you to do. So, um, Ethan page, um, I like each of the page, big personality, mm-hmm. um, young kid, good look, good size. You know, then, you know, he's not like a little, little, little guy like they have on the roster. So like he <laughs> adds some size. Thank goodness. He's got himself in tremendous shape. Mm-hmm. I, one of the only few things I liked on impact was the North yep. tag with Josh Alexander. So Hopefully Josh Alexander can jump there too, and that'd be nice to get those guys. And but he's a good talker, but I didn't. I, did he, I, someone posted on Twitter his like little promo after the uh, the pay per view, mm-hmm. and, and he's like his promo was basically was like, you know, I was in this six the six man t- ladder match, but I'm the spotlight. I had to share it with five other guys, and I'm like, well, you signed the contract for it. <laughs> like, 
you know, technically, right? Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You sign the contract to be in this match. So your choice is to share your spotlight with these five other guys. You could told AEW, I'm not going to be in that match, you know? Mm-hmm. You know I, I didn't even like how they debuted him in a ladder match that he's not going to win as a surprise. You're not going to win because it, to me, it's like you, your first time seeing him, he's mixed in with all these other guys and he doesn't win. Mm hmm. I was going to say, with Brian Cage, he debuted last year at Double or Nothing, but he won that he Casino won. Royale ladder match or whatever that was last year. So he won that one. So, you know, you brought up a good point as far as, yeah, why debut in a match like that where you can't spotlight and get the victory? So, um, the same thing with Matt Seidel. Like, they, I know he didn't hit that for, uh, shooting star press, and that's yeah. what you remember his debut of AEW. But really, if, say, he does hit it, and he hits it, cool, but he doesn't win it. You're not going to remember Matt Seidel was in that match anyways, right? Yeah. And so with Ethan Page, if he was going to be in this ladder match, this is all you have to do. You have these qualifying matches to get into this ladder match. At least you have two of them, right? Mm-hmm. You know, instead of just quickly trying to book this match last minute and throwing three guys in the match ahead of time, you have all the qualifying matches to get into the ladder match to make that ladder match actually mean something. And mm-hmm. you have Ethan Page win one of those, make mm. his debut on Dynamite, so we see he's a winner. And then if he loses the ladder match, it's like not like you know he just lost a multi man ladder match. At least we still saw him win a match, you know. So he he doesn't lose that like. And that's how I was frustrated with. Yeah, I was whole frustrated with this ladder match as far as three people or whoever two people were automatically enter and then the rest had the qualifiers. So it's like, why don't you do qualifiers for all of them? Yeah. That that was another issue I had with Dynamite the last few weeks. It was just kind of to thrown me, together. To me, that just as a as a booker, to me that just seems very poor planning. And mm-hmm. last, like, well, what I do, I need to put Cody somewhere. What I need a match for Cody. You know, Cody. If you, he's probably trying to find a spot for Cody first because Cody is a star, and now yep. he's trying to work around that. So mm-hmm. it, it seemed very like thrown together last minute. And that's why you get two qualifying matches. So. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with Scorpio Sky, who won, and he already lost a TNT Championship opportunity to Cody last year. Now, would he actually beat Darby, or would he lose again? And then would he really kind of go down to this? It's been a very last minute heelish turn, by the way. Just all of a sudden, on commentary, he's just talking differently, new attitude, they like to say. And. It's like, okay, so he lost two opportunities for that TNT championship. So where does he go from here at this point? I mean, I don't think it's time to take the belt off Darby. And I don't, I know Darby is technically a gimmick. So usually a guy like a gimmick doesn't really need the belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This guy would benefit greatly from the belt. But then again, like, I feel like Darby hasn't had any time with the belt. Like, he's barely yeah. on TV defending. He's mostly been hanging out in the rafters and <laughs> zip lining slowly to make run ins that. The heels can't stop him before he gets to the ring and drops down. They have to wait for him to drop down and unhook themselves to get their ass kicked. Like, like, give me. I think you need some time with Darby a little more on. So I can see Darby winning on Wednesday, Scorpio Sky, with some kind of roll up. Scorpio Sky's probably going to do that shocked face. <gasps> like they do all the time. Like, oh my. Like, instead of being upset, they're just shocked. I can't believe I lost. And then he'll probably like a, you know attack a, a, a beat up Darby who's barely has his arm raised in and a belt up high. He's, and then here comes Scorpius got to get some heat back and beat him up and maybe mm-hmm. a feud off that. But you know whatever. Yeah, no, it's funny. Just the fact that you and I are listing off all these different little things. Like, like I love AEW, but then you break down these little things from a logic standpoint. It's like ah, oh, there's so many plot holes here, and it's like come on, like do better like it's like you know people for years criticized wwe for this and that and like aew is supposed to be this breath of fresh air and like uh uh correct the course the way of course in pro wrestling and they got their own issues i'm like oh it's still not i mean i, I know it's to, tough it's tough i need to just trade up ass will hobbs why would you do a run in why do they have to do a run in <laughs> in the uh I'm sorry, I keep giggling so much. You're just a mask, but your arms are exposed and you're jacked. <laughs> like it's obviously it's you, but why were you wearing a mask? And then Hook comes on you with no shirt on. Yeah, no shirt on and and no mask. Like just, just they look 
Like, he was this little kid just throwing <laughs> shots. I mean, he, he's got his little cut body, but I'm like, he looks so young. Like, like Sting was already, yeah, that, like... What did you think of that cinematic match? To me, like, right off the bat, the baby faces come out, come come with this match with a group of geeks, right? And then the geeks get, get their ass kicked. So st- now we know Sting and Darby Allen hang out with a bunch of geeks that get their ass kicked. They're the not, hoodlums, yeah, they're calling them, yeah. I, I, I swear, I think Ricky Starks literally got his ass kicked this whole match. Mm-hmm. I, I think he might have, I know he got an offense move or two, like a punch in or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. But like, he literally got his ass kicked the whole match, and he lost. Like, and this is a guy, Ricky Starks. You look at their roster, with all the young guns. Mm-hmm. Man, dude, he sticks out like a future superstar. Yeah. So I don't think this match did hit him any any good. You know, Cage is booked like a monster and stuff, but yeah, I just thought this. I mean, I just thought it was it was law. There's only been one damn good cinematic match. We all know what that is the Bill and Yarner match. Everything else, just like just let's just stop this stuff. Let's just stop. Uh, my my thing was I said this to Philip last night, and you kind of brought the same thing on one of your tweets as far as like okay, they started in the ring in this warehouse, but then they go out of the ring pretty fast and spend the majority of it outside on the one floor to the next floor, and then just very uh, a nice coincidence they ended back in the ring to finish. So was the purpose like? you can only win by pinfall in that ring or was it technically a uh, false count anywhere? That's why they went all over the place. Cause like if I had to win in the ring, I would have not left or go that far away from it. You know what I mean? That's like from the logic standpoint. Yeah. So you, I mean, you listen to the American commentary, so they didn't explain that to you either. So, okay. I had the Spanish commentary, like I said earlier. <laughs> and so I was wondering about that referee. Was he just like told us, it was his his job was to stay in the ring just in case they come back. Yeah. You know, you can count the pinfall here or submission or, or get the submit call for the submission. I don't know. It's yeah, because just- yeah, they were going all over the different floors, throwing each other through glass and stuff. And yeah, it's like where'd that ref go? So like, yeah, was he just standing there like counting time? All right, you're gonna eventually come back over here and we'll finish <laughs> it up right here. Like, yeah, I, like they. Like, I like the way it was shot. Like, visually, it was great. Like, it seemed like an action movie. But, yeah, it's just from the logic standpoint, it's like, okay, you start in the ring, but then you go all over the place, do all these spots, and then just naturally just come back and finish there. It was like, like, what was the point of, like, going up to this different floor? Like, was there more weapons? Like, what was the strategy there? It's like, okay, if you have to win in the ring, why go to the second floor? I mean, just... Because... Sting, not Scorpion, Death Drop, Ricky Starks, anywhere else, and get the pin? Yeah, exactly. Hypothetically. No, no rules were – it was just a street fight. No yeah. one had ever said rules, but apparently – and that, who booked this building for the street fight? Did Sting and Darby get the building, or did <laughs> Team Taz get the building? Did they ever explain that one? No. It was just some said, random warehouse. <laughs> I want to know which part of this team of the team said – we need a ring for a street fight. Like, I don't know. It's I was just... trying to think. Um, oh, which 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 WWE pay per view they had the street fight? Um, was it, gold, was it Goldust and Roddy Piper? I mean, that one that's legendary. <laughs> just all aspects. Then that took place all throughout the night. That was uh, such a great WrestleMania moment. But um, no, but within the last year, um. God, wait, was it Street Profits versus? Oh, I'm trying. I'm totally blanking now, but. You know, they they wrestled all outside the performance center, but the ref was following them for pinfalls outside. Because you know, if it's in the street, I think so. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, you know, Ciampa and Gargano they had the one last heartbeat yeah. match, whatever it was, but that was in the separate warehouse though, with the ring. Um, I'm totally spacing, but no, anyway, yeah, it just <laughs> it's like we're gonna start in the ring, but we're gonna fight everywhere else, and then yeah, it just. You know, just on a nice little bow, we're going to just make sure we end in the ring as well. So, anyway. And one last one yes. last quick thing that just drove me insane. When Miro attacks Chuck Taylor in the hallway. Now, if you look at this hallway, it's a very long and narrow hallway. Now, when he attacks Chuck Taylor and Kip Saving attacks, attacks Orange Cassidy, they come from somewhere. 
Now, when they go to the wider shot, where they attacked from was a wall, no door. So they had, so they literally came behind the camera. That so there's, so. <laughs> oh my god! Like I'm sorry. Like the more I, the more I think about it, it's like the more I think about these details that you're bringing up. I'm just like, oh my god, it didn't make sense. It's, it's like they're like, okay, we gotta do this. Let's just film. It. Oh, like they came with that idea like. It felt like they came with that idea like 10 minutes before they shot it. Yeah. I know they didn't, which makes it even worse, right? <laughs> There's so much. I mean, yeah, we could, told, we could spend forever analyzing every little yeah. detail of this yeah. thing. But um, uh, moving on over to uh, more NXT-related stuff. So uh, mm-hmm. William Regal this week is supposed to make a big announcement. Oh, wait, actually, on Raw, it said two big announcements now. A lot of people are speculating, and there's three different possibilities I saw people leaning towards. So the first one, based on the finish from last week when Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler showed up against uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, is based on the finish with Adam Pearce bringing a Raw ref and everything. The idea is William Regal's going to announce NXT women's tag titles. Okay, that seems obvious or pretty cool that they're going to do that now the other rumors there are two that are floating around out there one um mike johnson uh i think was reporting that uh, uh the rumor is um nxt takeover is going to be two nights and this all started was uh with the whole wwe network peacock stuff a lot of people are canceling their network subscriptions and just sign up for peacock because now with the latest news from the network it's like it's on you now the fans to do all the work the migration is not going to be done automatically you got to cancel the network on your own sign up for peacock on your own and then you just take it whatever they put up there uh over the coming months so when people were trying to cancel from the WWE Network, they saw, are you sure you want to cancel? And they have like the latest set of events coming up. And one of the the things listed was a takeover on a Thursday, that Thursday before WrestleMania. So a lot of people were like, whoa, is takeover going to happen next month on a Thursday? And then speculation started coming out. Well, maybe it's going to be two nights. So Wednesday before WrestleMania will be night one of takeover on the USA Network. Night two will be that Thursday on the WWE Network. And so that's a lot of people are speculating. And then um, the third one is William Regal. Is he going to officially announce that NXT is going to move to Tuesdays, that first Tuesday after WrestleMania? So, you know, John, you know, out of those three options, if you just had to guess maybe which two seem the most likely that Regal's going to go with and kind of your thoughts on all of those different possible uh, decisions being made. Um, the first two, I think, uh, I think women's tag team title, um, you know, NXT, they have a lot of women there. Plus, they can once everything kind of opens up, they can bring women from NXT UK. Mm-hmm. So there's a, I mean, there's there's room for you know a, a type for the women, you know, a tag team type of women. Um, I think it's going to be the two night takeover, and it really does make sense mm-hmm. because you have that Wednesday before, and you have a Thursday. Why not just make it a, a Four, technically a four hour you know two part takeover right mm-hmm. you, you know two hours and this gives on Wednesday you get a lot of the bigger matches on Wednesday as well not the match probably you probably have Finn and whoever on the t- the network side of it but you maybe you get EO and I want to say Raquel Gonzalez for you know that's why I think it's going to happen in that in the month of April you know mm-hmm. you get you get like other big matches the Bronson Reed like it's it's just a, a takeover that people probably would maybe skip to watch an NXT TV show. They'll probably skip to watch Takeover next day. Like they don't think they need to watch that Wednesday. They can probably skip it, you know, and just watch because Thursday's the big show. Why watch? Why? But now it gives you a reason to not only make sure you tune in Wednesday, but also continue on to the Peacock Network for <laughs> part two. So I think it's a good strategy for them. Yeah, dude, and I was just thinking about, like, listen, I know we keep joking, like a broken record, there's so much wrestling to consume, so hypothetically, WrestleMania week in April, you got Monday Night Raw, the go-home show for that, um, and then TakeOver Night 1 on Wednesday, TakeOver Night 2 on Thursday, SmackDown Friday, Night 1 WrestleMania Saturday, Night 2 WrestleMania Sunday, Raw, the fallout from WrestleMania, and then potentially, if it's true, NXT 
on that first Tuesday. So, uh, what, eight different events or shows over the span of like a week and a half. So it's going to be so much to consume, man. Oh, my I God. I, I'm going to be okay with, the, um, at, least, at least on the WWE side, because don't forget we have AEW has a Dynamite show on Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, you right. got AEW Dynamite, you got Impact, you know, for anyone who watches Impact regularly, NXT UK, if they plan on doing something that Thursday, the regular tape show. I mean, there's, you know, New Japan Strong, like, you know, there's so much other stuff going on as well. It's like, I, I was thinking, like, I was thinking, like, I might take that Monday off from the day after WrestleMania. I might take it off just to recover. Probably a good idea. I was, I might just take that Thursday off and take over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long night because I got to watch for my show. I watch both nights. I watch Wednesday NXT and then I watch AEW and then we, re- then we review it on the next. Time yeah. Yeah. A podcast. So which now would take over. I have to push that show back a little bit. So that's going to be fun. But, I know I'm uh, already actually I'm just, it just came to me. So I'm just putting it out there. You know, we, we can figure out the details later. If WrestleMania weekend, if you want to record something that weekend, the offer is there. So uh, we can figure that out later. But anyway, because like I figure it's going to be so much going on. We might as well get everyone on board and, you know, you know, contribute or whatever. I think it'll be a lot of fun just talking about all this stuff that's taking place. So it's, it's- Sounds very WWE to, you know, hey, WrestleMania weekend became WrestleMania weekend WWE, but, but other promotions involved, right? So they're trying to capitalize on, hey, we want you to be our, consume all, all our network, all our television stuff, all we give you. So yeah, I could see them, you know, extending TakeOver for two shows. It makes it just makes sense to me. I think it's benefit for all the roster, and I think it'll benefit the TV shows, because now you got yeah, more stuff being built up for that those two shows. So and good. keep in mind, they haven't officially announced it yet. I mean, okay, the Hall of Fame last year, they announced the 2020 class. Unfortunately, no ceremony happened, and I think they just said more or less, this year, 2021, they're just going to have last year's class be inducted, like officially do it. I mean, based on the opening, that one opening is just that Tuesday before WrestleMania. That's the only open night if they want to do some sort of special on the network or something. So theoretically, Monday through the following Tuesday could be just nonstop WWE programming all week long, every night. So they really are making it into a week thing. I mean, before this pandemic started, I mean, WWE already turned that whole week into a big event. I mean, uh, you know, like in New York a couple of years ago now, as far as, uh, uh, you know, SmackDown Friday at Barclays, they had TakeOver at Barclays, WrestleMania, Raw. So they already make it like a four day weekend out of it, along with Access, you know, their big fan convention there. So um, I wonder if they're setting the groundwork now for the TV shows. So then maybe the following year in Texas, when things hopefully be back to normal completely, that they have the blueprint of all these shows on TV, plus they'll have access. I mean, really be like a week, week and a half of nonstop WWE that like people can make the whole vacation, yearly vacation out of WWE now. Like they really are taking over your whole life. That's the goal, right? That's the goal. They want you to come in and take in everything multiple days wwe content wwe events so yeah it's it's crazy man just it's so i mean (laughs) like who would have thought when we were kids like this is gonna be just the norm now or what i mean who would have thought like you said we were lucky just to see the raw on tv and you know if we catch it live and before we you know we set the vcr correctly or we didn't have dvr now i mean just so much at our fingertips i mean i I still just can't get over that as a wrestling fan we're we're just such a lucky time right now well look at my kids you know like you know they're slowly getting into wrestling but look at like for them like they can just Click on the network and go through the history and follow yep. along. Like me, I had to go tape trade, and read <laughs> magazines and books, and just see and have my imagination play in my mind how these matches turned out. Now you yeah. can go, oh, and watch, you know, SummerSlam of the Eight. And yeah. Boom, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, one last thing we just want to talk about is just this most recent episode of NXT UK. A lot of fun. Uh, you saw me <laughs> before we hit record. I was finishing up watching it myself. Um, dude, another fun episode. Um, 
you know, based on our conversation last week and how, uh, you know, you cut your promo and you really put over, uh, um, uh, Sam Gradwell, which by the way, thank you for when you shared last week's episode of the podcast. He, uh, he liked the tweet. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Sam Gradwell liked, I was like, awesome. He, by way of you acknowledging him on the podcast, he therefore saw us having that discussion. I was like, okay, awesome stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, just some of your takeaways, your favorite moments from uh, this most recent episode. Well, I, I love the opener between Elia Dragunov and Sam Gradwell. Um, they continue to build both guys up. Gradwell's still playing the strings of Elia Dragunov. He's trying to he's trying to bring out the violence in Elia and make it have him go over to a breaking point. But I think he's, he's not trying to get him to where he's making this killer. I think he wants to make a killer to benefit him than then making Ilya killer again to beat Walter. But I think it's going to backfire on San Gramwell. San Gramwell, he's such a good talent, man. Great look, great worker. Um, I That match really delivered for me personally. What do you, what you think mean. of the hair, though? That was my <laughs> like. I, I like it. It's different. It's unique. It stands out. Like, you know. It's, okay. It's, it's almost like a shark a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's, if you just had a bald head, like how many bald heads the guys they have on the roster, right? I was going to say, when you made the Stone Cold comparison last week, I thought you could easily just shave it off and, yeah, just look like Stone Cold behind me. So no, I, I can see, you know, kids with that haircut. I can see t shirts with like the outline of his head and that haircut or the side view with that little, you know, mohawk. I mean, I, like I said last on the last podcast together, I feel it in my bones. They really want to let loose with San Gregos. I think he can be a superstar. Well, okay. So a couple things I want to touch on that is um, obviously you giving that praise to Sam Gradwell, which which is awesome. Now, theoretically, to maybe reach those heights of like a Stone Cold, he would have to eventually move on, right, to like NXT Prime. And hopefully, you know, maybe plays cards rights can then raw or smack down. Like, I, do you think that's kind of like the stepping stone or the model that they're yeah. the infrastructure they're developing? It's like, you start on NXT UK, do your time over there, stand out. Then, like, you graduate to NXT Prime, do your thing there, and then eventually move on up to the big leagues, if you want to call it that, or the call up. So, I mean, is that something you would like to see for him over the coming years now? Oh, yeah. The, I mean, he's going to need to get out of NXT UK to get more eyes on him for sure. You know, okay. I can definitely see him. But when I say break out, it's not just moving brands. It's maybe letting him loose with creativity, like mm. let him cut his own promos. I mean, I know I know they, a lot of people think that they write every little word out. They don't. They give him a lot of the guys get bullet points. He's a good enough talker. To, he's one of those guys for like, you know, we need you to get this over, this over, but you do it the way you do it. And I think he okay. also got to put him in situations where he needs to win. He needs to do something that's going to stand out so people mm-hmm. can take notice him. Like, I was even talking to my buddy of mine, like, how I would do it. Like, you know, you know how they always do, like, newest signings are in the front row, right? But they can say, like, you know, hey, the pandemic's over. Now we'll be seeing more NXT UK people coming over. And here's a couple of them. You already know Tyler Bate, and here's A Kid. Here's this person. Here's this girl. Here's you know, you know, and then there's there's like there's like a two rows of them, and Gradwell's on the second row, and he's just fuming because he's in the second row, right? Mm, or like, okay. And, and the like William Rigo just kind of like acknowledges like half of that group, not the whole group. But Sam Gradwell's not gonna sit back and be happy to be there. He pops the guardrail. He grabs the mic from William Rigo or Shawn Michaels could be also a guy that can be out there to put over next to UK. And he grabs a mic from Shawn Michaels. And he's, I'm not going to sit there and stand there like a dude. I'm, you know, he starts cutting his own promo. And maybe he disrespects Shawn Michaels. Now we're like, hey, who's this freaking guy, Sam Gravel? Well, if you haven't seen him, why is, he, why is he disrespecting Shawn Michaels? Why is this guy talking trash? Then maybe he can interfere in some match. You know, you can do, you know, like, kind of like the Rattlesnake Killer. But you know what I mean? Like Stone Cold, like, you just never knew what he would do. I think yep. Sam Gravel is that kind of guy that he's just a, th- he's, his name is the Thunderstorm and, like, you know, when he shows up, it's a rumble. It's, it's a chaos. So I think that would be great. You know, I, I, I could do it. I could get him over, man. I know. I, I mean, I, I could, I feel. Yeah. And I think there's smart people there that can get him over, too. Yeah, no, I, I hear it. So like I said, I enjoy that opening match with him and uh, Ilya Dragunov. I like how the story with Ilya is like, 
he's trying to like go back to his roots or start over he has doesn't have the contacts in um but he still has like the uh, uh p post traumatic stress of the walter match even all these months later and like he'll get slapped and like he'll kind of just snap into like killer mode and go into the matches that he's been doing recently so that's an interesting story beat for him and what's this going to lead to and what's the ultimate plan and yeah i mean with, with, with walter i was like who can beat him now like he just stands out so you were telling me off the air you think Ilya could be the one to to, to beat him eventually i think they're going to save that in front of a crowd like it, it, it has to be in front of a crowd that's going to be such a big moment for everyone involved yeah i think i think so i that's who i would go with especially off that match they had in october mm-hmm. uh, i've re- Originally, I always thought it was going to be Tyler Bate after that classic match that they had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Tyler Bate's doing this whole Zen thing right now. So I don't think he's like for that spot. It just seems Ilya's going to like, he's going back, going backwards to go to create a, like a, a new him to bring himself to that violence to finally beat Walter. That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, and so I, I look forward to that moment as well. Um, also, just, hey, that main event, though, was awesome. So I was watching it before we record tonight. So, yeah, it was uh, NXT UK Women's Champion Kaylee Ray take on uh, Miko Samut- oh, I'm always butchering it. Uh, Sadamora. Sadamora. And, God, just, it was so good. I, like, I hate to make the comparison to, like, AEW, but, you know, watching some of these AEW women's matches, and I see a match like this, I'm like, oh, it's just night and day, you know, from a performance yeah. standpoint. But yeah, your thoughts on uh, how this main event played out here? Really good. I was totally shocked by the finish, and, uh, and mm-hmm. if you haven't seen it. I don't want to spoil it, but just the way it went down, and you know, the result. I guess we say I, I was not expecting it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Kaylee Ray is one of the best women wrestlers in the world. I mean, she's tremendous, and Bianca you know, Moore has been wrestling, you know. What, I think she debuted in 1995. Yeah, they were saying like 25 years on the broadcast. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So she, you know, she's tremendous. They had a great chemistry. They worked together before, and I think progress something like that. But like, it was it was physical. There's one part in the match I I I just kind of like said, oh my god, like the count. I don't think Miyako said more remember that there's the 10 count in WWF created a 20 count in Japan. Oh, because that, like she's rolls back the ring and the rest couldn't count on. I'm like, is she going to go? Like, she's not going. Like, if Miyako Sanamo wins by count out, she doesn't win the title. In Japan, I think titles change. If I remember correctly, titles change hands at disqualifications and count Okay. Out. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like yeah. USA, the count out, the champion chains. So, like, it was getting to, like, nine and Katie had us, you know, and then I think Nigel said, you know, that's not the, she's a competitor. She wants to win. She doesn't want to keep her title by a count out. And I'm like, I think that was a little weird. But, Whatever it that little that little moment, you know, is not going to ruin a, such a great match that was. So, but I just remember that I just want to bring that up because I just, I remember I was like I was getting anxiety because I was like, wait a second, wait a second, is she going to really win this match by the count out and not win the title? That's going to be a that's going to be like you know a popcorn for like the sparklers, yeah, uh, Mega Moxley match at that app. <laughs> On a side note, Jimbo texted me and he's like, hey man, like it's a sparklers to have a death match. I'm like, sure, let's do it. Fourth of July, we can go get some in Pacifica. I think the best troll was Shotzi Blackheart when she <laughs> tweeted out the Gilbert, like, uh, uh, coming to the ring wherever recently it was. He did. Yeah. <laughs> God, God I damn it. AEW is just going to. They. I, I, my guess is they'll poke fun of themselves on Wednesday. Or, or hopefully maybe I'm being the elite. They'll make fun of it somehow um, as well. I won't I see know. it. But, <laughs> I uh, but- it's, like the, it's like, it's like, like I get my, my co-host Garrett Gazal says, it's not canon. You know, like if, it just seems like it's not canon to him. So he doesn't watch it. And I get that. Like you can't do something being elite that a small portion of our audience watches but your other audience doesn't know anything about being elite or doesn't follow it. So you try to say, oh, it'll happen on being elite. Like, well, it'd be nice if you did on the main show. So Yeah, more know, eyeballs. Yeah. On T- yeah. TNT's paying you a lot of money to yeah. do your A content on there. <laughs> so, um, I want to see you. Already done comedy show. For- <laughs> exactly. So, so uh, I was going to say for, for this main event here, um, uh, when Miko did the, uh, um, oh, my God. Uh, the, the Death Valley driver on the outside oh, yeah. on the apron. Oh, great spot. 
Uh, but just the kick she was laying into Kaylee Ray. And I mean, just like I said, the back and forth, it, it, it's just so good. Like you said, if you have a chance to, to watch it, please do yourself a favor. Um, I know, John, and you cut that great promo last week. Just like NXT UK, you got to watch it. <laughs> you gotta watch it. It's a great show, great wrestling show. Um, uh, and I also like the details of like their version of like the Thunderdome or the screens. They had other uh, members of the women's roster watching, so it was just to add more um, value, importance to this match. It's like the other upcoming contenders for that championship are watching and want to see this outcome. So I thought that was a really cool, just nice little detail that it just it added an extra layer to everything. What did you think about Aoife Valkyries, the great young female talent that they have, just like perched in a yellow, I don't know, in a purple hue, like <laughs> off the side? And I... <laughs> I, thought, I was like, what the? I don't know about that, dude. Like, I get it. She's kind of like a mystical character, but she hasn't done anything too mystical. She's not disappearing and reappearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought, it, I just got a kick, like. She's out there posed, uh, you know. <laughs> you have to see it. She's not uh, mythical or magic like uh, like Shaq, who can disappear from an ambulance. <laughs> Imagine like Ric Flair's wrestling, and I don't know Dusty Rhodes like a beam of light on him as he's watching. I mean, just it's just ridiculous to me. That's, that's uh, of the day, very over over, but uh, produced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, no, like I said, this is a great episode of NXT UK. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just, um, I'm just curious though, like just long term, you know, I, I, from NXT UK standpoint, can someone do the majority of their career in NXT UK or is NXT UK ultimately the, the purpose of its existence is you do your time there. They ultimately want you to go to NXT and then they eventually want to go to Raw or Smack. Like, I'm kind of curious what's, ultimately the the focus of having NXT existence there, like long term. They create a territory there okay. in the UK. I mean, I think there will be just exclusive NXT UK talent. They will bring some here and there, like you see now, Grizzled Young Veterans, Imperium are in NXT Prime as they sail. <laughs> um, so, you yeah, know, there's be some crossover, but there's people that will just stay with, you know, NXT UK. And once it gets run again and Hopefully they can eventually get the house shows deals going. Um, get on. I think they're on a network now over there, but you know maybe they get on the biggest network there eventually. You know that's the goal is to get some network money, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so I think you know, they really they really believe in it, and I know Triple H does. And- yeah. So. No, no, like I said, we, we can go into a lot of detail about NXT UK. So we'll, we'll see how things play out. I will definitely maybe next time get you on. We'll talk about some more. Like I, I pick your brain about Imperium and what's going on there with Timothy Thatcher. And uh, I don't know, maybe real quick, just do you think Timothy Thatcher is going to be recruited to join Imperium or be like the U.S. leader while Walter's overseas? Yeah, well, there is history between Timothy Thatcher and Imperium. They're ring comp and yeah. – uh, so uh, he was with Walter and uh, uh, Marcel Bartel. Mm-hmm. And I think it's you know, Alex Dieter Jr. Then, right? So, yeah. I I want to say that's what people they want you to think is going to go, but I think I think this two night NXT takeover, if that's what's really going to happen, I feel it will. I think Walter, who prefers to be in the UK than come to the United States, but he will do it for big shows like When Worlds Collide, Survivor Series, certain takeovers. Mm-hmm. One like he won the title there. Mm-hmm. I think he might appear on this show defending the NXT UK title, and I could see it against uh, Timmy Thatcher, or you know maybe Ciampa would be a good opponent for him too. That's a different matchup, and uh, you know I think that'd be good too. So either either one of those I think would be a really fun match for Takeover. Yeah, man, I, I look forward to it. So give me more Walter all the time. That's I'm all no. for it. So so much that uh, yeah we can get into. So yeah, we'll see how this plays out. And that's the brilliance of NXT UK. He doesn't appear on every show. Yeah. He doesn't wrestle. You know, he, he, he's, he feels like a special world champion. So when he does wrestle, it's special. And you want to make sure you tune in to that. And he's it's not only because he's going to deliver a great match, but since it's so rare he wrestles, you have to see it. Yeah. I'm, I hear you, man. I'm all for it. So, all right, let's go ahead and start wrapping things up, John. Where can all the clicks find you online? They can follow me on Twitter at LaRockaJL. You can also follow our Fight Game Media Twitter at Fight Game 
at the fight game at fight game media <laughs> and uh we're on uh the blue wire network uh every uh, friday we have our podcast Gary Gonzalez and i from the wrestling observer we give our likes and our dislikes of nxt and aw dynamite and uh <laughs> and check out our patreon we got a lot of great shows on that as well Awesome. So, yeah, I encourage all the clicksters to follow you and uh, subscribe to the Patreon. Like I said, just great content there as well. Um, I'm Baby Huey. As always, follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official, Twitter and Instagram at Baby Huey 83. Of course, in the clicks on all your favorite social media platforms as well at in the click in the click at gmail.com. Subscribe to us on your uh, whatever podcast platform you like to use as well. Uh, let's see. Get the merch over at Teespring. And yeah, listen. Like I said, a lot uh, over the last week and a half, a lot of episodes have been out. So please take time, listen to this, and listen back to some of our other episodes as well. So much great content, and it's going to get more as we get closer to WrestleMania with so much stuff going on. So we'll have to plan out our schedules for that as well. So thank you for all the continued support. And on that note, let's go home. And that's the bottom line, because Huey said so.